Imagine the world you want for yourself and for your loved ones. Is this a dystopian world where we give in to our challenges? Or is this a world of abundance where life and work become easier, more efficient and better? Having a job, having not just a job, but a great job is not just an American dream, it's everybody's dream. The difference between high performance teams, kind of like Navy SEALs, they do things that look impossible to us and people that just screw up everything they do. 70% of the variation can be described by one phenomenon, just the manager. Just the manager. People watch what you do, not what you say. If you are quick to cast blame and slow to accept responsibility, that matters. Any lead HR individual needs to champion and orchestrate a great people strategy. They're all accountable for your hiring and firing and training and development and what have you. But the magic comes in into the orchestration of all of that. Right now, there seems to be a I'd say a gap in supply and demand in the economy in terms of like the number of people who clearly have talent and passion for something but just are not recognized for it. And then we have people saying, well, there's not enough talent in the market, like there's something going wrong there. We're trying to prepare young students for the workforce of tomorrow, a workforce that like the Smithsonian 176 years ago was not yet conceptualized for jobs that did not yet exist and for societies that were still unimagined. Having moms in the workplace leads to 40% greater retention, 15% higher productivity, and an overall more positive workplace. Why not bring more positivity, more commitment, more retention to your workplace? And you can do that with moms. So if you cared about educational continuity during the first wave of the pandemic, then you were as good as your internet connection and you were as good as your hardware and software and the burden we put on teachers was triple. You now had to be tech support, you now had to have a semi-hybrid classroom with some people there and some people not, and you had to pretend that you could expand the intimacy of a classroom setting over the internet. So you guys, we're gonna take a quick little break so we can refresh. Everybody stand up really quick. Can we hit the music? We need to move. This is a really exciting time in education. There's, I think, a growing momentum around the idea that there's a spectacular window of opportunity, an almost unprecedented window of opportunity, over the next six, seven years. What are the ways in which our world is changing? And what are the ways in which education will be changing to adapt to that world, but also to lead that world? One technology that I'm exploring and using is virtual reality. And the technology of the headsets that we use to have these immersive experiences that we can have, for example, extended campuses for universities or extended spaces for a workplace. Greece, which is a very conservative learning environment, is showing that they can be very transformative. So why can't we do this in other countries? We are very much now having a conversation where we want to say and, not or. We want to talk about degrees and skills. When we talk about pathways to work uh, coming out of the pandemic, it's not just been a pumping of the brakes, it has been a full outright traffic jam uh, where the super highways of education, you know, that were only working for some and not others, aren't working for anyone. Most potential learners feel like this is an exclusive experience and unfortunately I think the Varsity Blues case and so many other public atrocities over the course of the last few years have only reinforced that. We are at the brink of understanding how we communicate better and I think that we communicate in layers that we don't even have names for. So like gravity, you know, how do we start to use AI to augment ourselves to reinvent science? Being in a room with so many people so focused on making work meaningful and making work work for us has been so inspiring. You know, work uh, ends up being what we spend most of our waking hours doing, most of our lives, right? And so the, uh, the kind of exploration to find work that is fulfilling is uh, I just couldn't think of something that could, could make people more passionate, right? I think that's very infectious in the group that's here.